Welcome to the decomposition of sodium bicarbonate stoichiometry lab. So, in this lab, you will use stoichiometry to probe the decomposition of sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate may be more familiar to you as baking soda. Baking soda is very commonly listed as an ingredient in recipes for baked goods, pancakes, and waffles. As the food item is being cooked or baked, the baking soda undergoes decomposition, releasing gas and causing the food item to rise and have a light texture. There are actually two theoretically possible chemical reactions that could occur during thermal decomposition of baking soda, also known as sodium bicarbonate. So we have the two reactions here. Sodium bicarbonate yields sodium hydroxide and carbon dioxide. And the second reaction, sodium bicarbonate yields sodium carbonate and carbon dioxide and water. By comparing the theoretical yields of the possible solid products with the actual experimental yield of the product, you will be able to determine which of the above decomposition reaction occurred. So I'm going to skip over the procedures. Your teacher will go over that in the video. And let's answer the pre-lab questions together. So we need to write a balanced chemical reaction for both uh, theoretical decomposition reactions. So the first reaction, and I'm going to label it reaction number one. is NaHCO3, and it's in solid form, yields NaOH, a solid, and carbon dioxide gas. This is array balanced. So let's move on to reaction number two. So we have NaHCO3, then Na2CO3, CO2 gas, and water vapor. I look at this. Uh, chemical equation and I see that it is not balanced. So I'm going to put a coefficient of 2 here in order to make the chemical equation balanced. Okay, those are our two chemical uh, equations. Let's move on to number 2. So number 2 states how many moles of NaHCO3 are in 4.2 grams of NaHCO3. So I see that I need to convert from grams of baking soda to moles. So I'm underlining and boxing like we normally do. And I start my conversion with the number I underline. I don't want that unit, so I'm going to copy and paste it and put it on the bottom in order for the unit to cancel out. Then, the unit I want goes on top, and that is moles Time to plug in our numbers. So, whenever I see moles, I always put down 1 without hesitating at all. For grams, I need to go to the periodic table and get that value. So I'm going to calculate molar mass on the side here. I add them up, 
and I get 84.01 grams per mole. So I'm going to take that number and I'm going to plug it into my setup here. And then grams cancel out and now I divide. Once I divide, I get a long answer, but I need to round to the sig figs, which is the number that I started with. And I see that 4.2 has two sig figs, so I'm rounding to 0 0.050 moles of NaH CO3. So that's the number of moles. So now number three. It says using the number of moles of sodium bicarbonate calculated in question two, what is the theoretical yield in grams of solid product that can be produced in each of the possible decomposition reactions? So there are two reactions here that I need to worry about. So I'm going to be making sure I have enough room for it. So I'm going to start off with reaction number one. My solid product for reaction number one is sodium hydroxide or NaOH. So I start off with the number of moles and I'm converting to grams of sodium hydroxide. So I need to use my balance equation in order to write my molar ratio. So I'm going to write this on the side over here, and I'm going to erase it later. I have mole A, mole B. So this is the molar ratio. I can go from mole A to mole B. And from mole B, I can go to grams of B. So I'm going to use this outline here to help me set up my um, railroad track. So using mole A, which is mole NaHCO3, I want the solid product, and that is moles of NaOH. And then next... I want grams. So to cancel out moles, I put on the bottom and I put grams of NaOH on top. So now I am here. I am done. That's the unit I want. So let's solve. Every time I have moles over moles, I need to look at my balanced chemical equation, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Let's scroll up. So I notice that the balanced chemical equation, NaHCO3 is 1 in reaction 1, and NaOH, the coefficient for that one, is also 1. So I'm going to place a 1 and a 1 here for my molar ratio. So. I'm going to plug in the next set of numbers. Anytime that mole is with something else, it's automatically 1. And then for grams, I'm going to calculate the molar mass right now. So for NaOH, I have Na, which is 22.99, O, which is 16, and H, which is 1.01. .01. When I add it up, I get 40 grams per mole. So I'm putting it in the railroad track. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take 0 0.050 times 40. And once I get that in my calculator, the answer is 2.0 grams of NaOH. So that's reaction number one. Now, I want reaction number two. I'm going to use the same um, steps that I did for reaction one. So again, mole A to mole B to grams 
of B. But for reaction 2, the solid is sodium carbonate, Na2CO3. So that's what I'm going to convert to. So I'm going to write down right here reaction number 2. Start off with the number of moles used in the example. And now setting up my railroad track. So I want to cancel out that moles. So I put it on the bottom. And I need to get into the substance. So I'm changing from A to B, keeping moles. So moles stay, and the substance I want, again, I'm looking at the equation, the solid product is Na2CO3. Now, I'm wanting to go to grams. So I'm putting moles on bottom. Remember that whatever goes on bottom is the thing that you're canceling out. On top is what we're putting here using the um, map here to help you out. So I have grams of Na2CO3. So moles over moles, we take a look at our coefficient in our chemical equation. So for moles of so sodium bicarbonate, I have a coefficient of 2. For sodium carbonate, I have 1. When moles is paired up with something else, as in our last part of the fraction, I always put down 1 for mole. And for grams, I need to calculate molar mass. And I'm going to do that on the side over here. So I have an A2. Once I multiply that, I get 45.98. Then I have carbon and O3. So I have 105.99. I multiply and I divide and I get 2.6 grams of sodium carbonate. And I'll have enough room there. So I'm going to write it underneath Na2CO3. Okay, so I have number four now. Using decomposition reaction number one and the theoretical yield calculated above, what is the percent yield if the actual yield was 1.85 grams of sodium hydroxide? So for reaction one, that was sodium hydroxide yield, uh, yielding um, 2.0 grams. So let's write down the percent yield equation. I have percent yield equals actual over theoretical times 100%. I'm going to plug in my values now. So the actual yield was 1.85 grams and theoretically was 2.0 grams times 100 percent and I get 92.50 percent. Just a reminder that actual number is from here and it's what you got in lab. Theoretical always comes from our calculations on paper. What we would get 
if it was a perfect world. Finally, we have five. What would be the percent error for decomposition reaction number one? So let's write down the equation for percent error. Percent error is the absolute value of actual minus theoretical over theoretical times 100%. So I plug in my numbers, y'all. I have 1.85 grams minus 2 grams over 2 grams times 100%. And when I do, I get 7.5% error. So we are done with the pre-lab. Um, please uh, watch the next video to collect your data and then you guys are done for the day.